such delightful little boys. You are delightful. You are delightful. Hello there, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. Again, I'm starting this vlog really late in the day. It's a Monday today, so I have spent all morning just doing laptop work, basically. I had a lot of emails to catch up on, a lot of really boring little tasks that just had slipped by the wayside. So I spent the morning catching up on those. Um, but there is quite a bit to update you on here in the house. And I know I published, well, the last video that I've published since filming or as of filming this is my another stories haul and so many of you are really pleased that the fashion content is coming back but i would say most of the comments are people saying josie we just want to see home vlogs so i'm really 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 happy that you guys are enjoying them and i'm just loving filming them i feel like there's just so much to share every single day there is something fun going on in the house and it's changing so quickly even though we've been here for how long two months i feel like we're just making we're making waves and yet there is still so much to do so yeah, um, I don't actually know if I've shown you this room since we put the rugs down from Wayfair. So let me show you this. We don't have our big um, fluffy pillows on the back of the bed at the moment. They're currently upstairs, but what Charlie and I found was that when we were getting out of bed, we just found it a little bit cold putting our feet on the oak floorboards. So these are the rugs that I ordered from Wayfair and they're kind of double sheepskin rugs if that makes sense there's also one on my side i think this bed linen just needs a really good shake out because it's looking a little bit flat it is due to be washed <laughs> fun fun but yeah it just adds a real coziness to this room and this will of course be our guest bedroom once the master is complete i never properly had a dressing table before um but i have to say having had this little dressing table for the time that we've been in this room i have really enjoyed having a little space to do my makeup do my hair so i think maybe i might look to get a dressing table in the master bedroom as well i'll see if i can find anything that would match our bedding, our, our bed and other furniture. We should also be having another Wayfair delivery anytime now. I did one big order, but where things are coming from different places, I have different delivery days. So today, I think we're getting our concrete urns delivered for the garden. So hopefully they will arrive any minute now. But first of all, I want to update you on the master bedroom and the pink bedroom. So for a little bit of um a floor plan i guess to show you where we are so this bedroom is the one that charlie and i are sleeping in and the house has kind of two corridors so there's this corridor here which looks really dark and then through this very old door there is a second corridor this is actually a glass fire door and that leads up to the bedroom which is going to be my walk-in wardrobe and then the attic bedrooms and then if you go down this corridor that's the room that will be Charlie's office that I've been doing a little bit of filming in lately. And it's a shame the camera doesn't really pick it up, but the lighting in this room is just stunning. And if we continue down the corridor, we have what is now officially the pink bedroom. Oh my goodness. Does the camera pick it up in its true fabulousness? Not quite, but this room... Oh, it's so annoying. I can't get the camera to show. There we go. That's a little bit more of a true colour. So this room now has the most beautiful ballet shoes paint on it. So you'll remember I did all those little swatches on the wooden, wooden boards and it just looks so gorgeous. I think the contrast between the white ceiling and the pink walls just looks absolutely stunning and the colour is just incredible. So I don't know if you remember how this room looked before. The walls were grey but they had been painted without any preparation. So they were really peeling away down at the sides. There were lots of cracks showing and our decorator was explaining, for example up here, you can see still some very, very fine cracks. That's just the nature of the wood. So unfortunately that's not gonna change. We had some um, powdered pink 
I believe that's the cover from the crown paint from our Chiswick apartment left over, so we thought we'd make a bit of a statement on the fireplace. Originally, we asked the decorator to do the inside of the fireplace white, but actually we've since decided that it would be nicer to have it as ballet shoes pink, so that's going to be um, pink as well <laughs> next time you see it. And I'm just waiting for some wood, satin wood finish paint for the backs of the doors. And then the painting in this room is going to be done. <laughs> so I just love how this room looks. I think the colour is spectacular. It is exactly what I wanted. The glow in this room is just so lovely. It's making me very glowy. Um, but tomorrow this room is going to be even more beautiful because we have the electrician coming over and he's going to install the lovely lights. And I think that's going to make such a difference in this room because they're such beautiful light fittings. You may remember Charlie and I unboxing them and yeah, gonna make a huge difference. And then we were also debating today whether to paint the windowsill powdered pink, um, sorry, ballet shoes pink, or freshen up the white. And I think we've decided we're going to keep it white. It's annoying because with the eye, the light in this room is stunning. There we go, you can see it a little bit better here because the sunlight just streams in. But if you try and point the camera towards the sunlight, it just creates a huge, huge shadow. But it really is the most gorgeous room and it's just going to be the most cozy, stunning guest bedroom. I don't know if you will have seen this in the last vlog, I can't remember if I showed you, but this is the window seat that we picked up from the local um, upholsterer. She'd actually made them for the previous tenant of this house, so before we bought it there was actually a tenant in here a couple of years before we bought it, um, and he commissioned these soft furnishings, which he never collected. So the lady that runs the local interiors shop that made them, she was like, well, you guys might as well have them, they are the exact <laughs> right size for your house, and they're just clogging up my workroom, so that was a very kind freebie, and it's just a really nice little spot to look out over the garden, even on a grey day like today. Okay. This has become a little bit of a paint hoarding area. We are getting through a lot of paint with all the work that we're doing, but this is the paint that we used in that gorgeous pink room, ballet shoes, um, what else have we got? This was the leftover powdered clay from the Chiswick property. We've got some satin white paint for the window sills. Oh my goodness, this is pretty much a crown paint shop in our hallway. Okay, can't remember the last time I showed you guys this room, but there, there is an update. So we're currently stood in the master bedroom and I'm hopeful that by the end of this week we might actually be able to, well, we probably won't be able to move into this room because I'm not sure how long the mattress is going to take, but we are taking delivery of the furniture, so the bed, I think there's like a chaise long, um, possibly a mirror, I can't, I can't even remember what I ordered, it was so long ago, we're taking delivery of that on Friday, so this room is going to really start to be very exciting then and then as soon as we get the mattress then we are in here but uh, to update you so the walls are now beautifully painted with crowns delicate white and I think it is the most beautiful shade for this room it's a very very subtle pinky white but really just a warm white if that makes sense throughout Chiswick we used white glove which was also a really lovely warm white but this one is even warmer with just a gorgeous very very soft rosy pink um, hue to it and then what we are doing which is quite exciting is we're making a little bit more of a statement wall over on this side we really just wanted to highlight the beautiful paneling um, and the color scheme for this room the strange as it sounds is actually going to be green and gold so we thought why not try just outlining some of the panels in gold paint so Andrew the lovely decorator has started that today this whole section over by the door is done and we're just doing this wall so this whole wall will have the panels with the gold detailing um this is the gold that he's using let's have a little look 
Liberon Gilt Cream, so proper gold gilt, and then he's using a cloth to give it a little bit of a shabby chic kind of finish. And I think that with the bed being against this wall, it's just going to make the most spectacular feature. And then, as you know, the master bathroom comes in through here, and this room is going to be the same delicate white as this room. And Charlie actually really wants to paint the entire outside and legs of the bathtub gold so we shall see i think that could look pretty cool it'll be nice to finally start to properly use this bathroom i started to use it a little bit when we first moved in but since the decoration i mean it's a bit of a bomb site in here since the decoration i've not been able to use it so i'm just really looking forward to getting back in my gorgeous bathroom i just love the color in here so much so that's a little update for the decoration. I will show you how the pink room looks with the lights in situ tomorrow, but I think I'm gonna save the master bedroom now until it's a little bit more complete. So once you've got the bed in and things like that, so it's a real transformation. But hopefully that'll be next week. I really, really hope so, because I'm getting so impatient and I just, yeah, cannot wait to be in this room. So something else, which may potentially be the most boring thing I've ever showed you on YouTube is this little room. So this, do you guys remember what it used to look like? It was basically just a completely empty, plain cupboard with no shelving whatsoever. Whereas now, dun dun dun, it is a very practical cleaning cupboard. So I did have um, Pinterest boards filled with ideas on how to make it a beautiful cleaning cupboard, but that is, that is harder than it looks. So ours is just very, very practical and pretty organized, if I do say so myself. So the carpenters put in these shelves and also this unit here to cover up all the pipes and it is removable. So if we need to get to the pipes, then we can quite easily. So we have got some baskets and some kind of pop-up boxes, all of which I just ordered from Amazon. So in this one we have got cloths and washing up liquid. These are the refills of the Colt and Willow washing up liquid, which um, I'm just absolutely in love with. And then these are actually really good. These are called magic erasers. They're great for cleaning the agar um, and any stubborn little marks. Bathroom and bleach. So those kind of products are in there. We've got my laundry basket here. This is my favourite um, detergent, the Neroli from Clean Kin Beauty. And every now and then, if it's a really, really lightly soiled wash, I'll use the laundry egg. So this is a super sustainable way of doing your laundry. You literally, you literally pop your egg into the wash and it's got little mineral balls inside it that help to clean your washing. You don't need any other solution. And then if a wash is really dirty, then I'll use a, an old school washing tablet. This is the immediate stuff. So if you're gonna dash around the house to do a quick clean, you can just grab this and then everything's with you. Um, and then the box is at the back. Let's see. This one is floor. So we have a few different kinds of floor in this house. So we've got products in there to treat the wood, to clean up the stone. Um, and then this one, I think, oh, that says all-purpose cleaner. So again, we've got refills for the Colton Willow in the back there, some Zoflora and things like that. Then these are the only wipes <laughs> that I think are acceptable. These are the biodegradable Ecova wipes. They are particularly good for keeping in the car in case of any doggy sickness, which Dexter does suffer from. We've got some of our Vorvirk, um vacuum bags. <laughs> poopery spray, uh, fridge apples, then we've got some washing up gloves in pastel colours and the washing up um, brushes from Kitchen Craft in this glass container and then these really lovely dusters were from Kitchen Craft as well, again in a glass container. And then down here, it is a little bit more messy. We've got a couple of different mops, we've got a first aid kit. We have got a bag full of tote bags because that's really handy. This is a bag full of really old face cloths, which I now use for cleaning. Vacuum cleaner attachments. And then we have got our hand wash and um, various different refills. So Charlie and I are just obsessed with the Bramley hand soap and we have the glass bottles, which we can refill from here. 
And then in the door, a few miscellaneous. So we've got plastic bags in this bag to reuse them, dustpan and brush. These are two bottles of pre-made up Zaflora, which is great again for any doggy mistakes on the stone floor. And then this one is mostly water, but with a tiny, tiny bit of washing up liquid in there. So good for any um, little marks anywhere. This is the best carpet stain remover we have ever tried. I think you can just get it in most supermarkets. And we use that a lot when we left the Clapham house. And then this is Barkeeper's Friend. I haven't actually opened this bottle yet, but great as a surface cleaner, really, really tough. So if you've got any tough stains, that's fantastic. And then we've got a few little doggy things up here, plaque spray for teeth and a little brush and teeth cleaning pads. So that, my darlings, is our very exciting cleaning cupboard. This is another area that I'm really excited to furnish and we'll get there <laughs> slowly but surely. But these are the lights which are gonna get fitted tomorrow. These were from Wayfair, they were a really good price and we're gonna be putting them up here and actually I think we're gonna get that one filled in because we might put a lamp there. So uh, that one as well is gonna be replaced with one of those. Monday afternoons when I am becoming a bit too brain dead to do any more work are usually chore afternoons. So while Charlie has just driven to the local recycling centre, which has finally opened to drop off some cardboard boxes and packaging and things like that, I'm going to put on the third laundry load of the day and you guys will remember how much I love doing laundry. Um, so as I mentioned, usually, usually I will do the wash with Clean Kin and I don't have any affiliation with this company by the way, I just absolutely love their products. And I pour that into the auto detergent drawer. So I've totally filled that up. That'll be good for maybe, I would say 10 washes. Um, but because what's in here now are mostly Charlie's Darks, I've just popped in a Persil tablet, which I feel just is really good for more kind of stubborn, dirty things. So what I'm actually gonna do is get rid of the automatic detergent, because that will mean that nothing will come out of here, and get rid of all the automatic softener. Ooh. And put that on a dark garment wash. 53 minutes. Actually, I bet I can recycle that as opposed to putting that in the normal bin. So let me show you my kind of whiz around the house everyday cleaning activities, seeing as I've showed you the cleaning cupboard. We have these little wooden um, laundry dryers. We don't have a, a dryer, as I mentioned previously. We might get one in the coach house, but for now, I actually really like just air drying clothes and with it being all in the utility room, it's just absolutely perfect. These will need ironing a little bit later. And with my white wine vinegar um, solution, the towels are getting fluffier again, which is fantastic. As you know, we use the massive Hoover or vacuum cleaner, I should say, for, you know, big cleans. But when I just want to dash around and make an impact in half an hour, I am going to reach for this. So it's got um, obviously the normal kind of vacuum cleaning head. But what I'm actually going to do to start with, because you should always clean from top to bottom. That's a really good, um, there we go, tip when you're cleaning because obviously stuff falls down and then obviously you want to clean your floors last. And this house has a lot of those little nooks and crannies that a big hoover can't get into. So what I'm going to do first of all I think is give the stairs a really quick vacuum. these little areas that get very cobwebby you really have to keep on top of it so just a quick 
dash around with a vacuum cleaner on a daily or nearly daily basis just makes you feel like a spiderweb busting ghostbuster very satisfying now i'm going to move into the kitchen um, and before i do any vacuum cleaning i'm going to do the worktops so I've mentioned before um, my love for this product. It's the Colton Willow all-purpose cleaner. So I'm just gonna spray this on the worktops. <laughs> and then my favorite tip, I'm sorry, this video is literally gonna be the most boring video ever, but my favorite tip when you're cleaning your kitchen surfaces is to let the spray kind of work for a few moments. Don't just go straight in with your cleaning cloth. And then when you do go in with your cleaning cloth, check at eye level if there's any crumbs or dirt left on your surface because often from looking at your surface from above, you can't actually see it and it looks clean. But then when you look at eye level, you can actually see all the dirt and gross stuff that's on your work surface. You might have seen there that I was actually having to vacuum clean the stone walls, um, especially up here behind me, because even the stone where it's so textured gets little cobwebs on it. So thankfully, the vacuum cleaner, this one is, I don't know the actual number or name of it, but it's from Samsung and it's got like, um, it's got lots of different attachments, including one specifically for stone floors, like these little discs which polish it. But this little brush attachment head is really good for cobwebs and especially textured surfaces like window sills and um, stone walls. So that's absolutely perfect. It is now nearly five o'clock. I don't know where this afternoon has gone. So I'm just gonna get myself a couple of biscuits and set my video live. Not the wealthy is but all I make, I make it all this better on you Now be a date for the night, be my plate, make tonight come through and trip, take it slow, I'll go <laughs> Are you coming to help your mummy? Look at that silly little fluffy marshmallow making his way over here What a silly little boy In desperate need of a haircut It's okay, Dickens, you take your sweet time. Just slowly saunter over in your own time. It's not like your mother is sat here waiting for her boy. You are so scruffy. You're so <laughs> scruffy. Goodness me, I just adore you. I adore you. I adore you. I adore you. I adore you. So divine. Right, time to open up. Time to open up the antique bed. It is quite hard to fully picture the bed right now because obviously it's in parts um, and remember I'm going to be painting and reupholstering the bed. We actually have the lady from the local reupholsterers coming over in the next few days to give some opinions on it but this is the current state of the bed. So this is the headboard. Not sure whether to do it white or gold. So we've got the white chair and the gold chair. Um, I think I really just need to decide on the fabric. This is hopefully going in the pink room, so yeah, 
I've got some decisions to make. And then the, I don't know if it's called a footboard or a baseboard, and then the slats over here. I've never known a bed to not have lots of slats. You know, normally they are like ding, 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 ding. Whereas this only seems to have one central slat. So surely the mattress is gonna fall out. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe they were meant to send me some more. I'm not too sure. Yeah, it just kind of feels like the mattress would flop down in the middle. Hmm. Hopefully it's not something we have to get a carpenter to come and build for us, because that would be a bit of a pain. But yeah, I think Charlie and I might try building it, like putting it together so we can see the size. It was meant to be a double bed, but I am pretty sure this is king size, which is not a huge problem. Uh, might end up putting it up in the attic bedroom if it is king size and not double, just because I don't want the bed to like take up the whole room in the pink bedroom. So we shall see. And all wrapped up in this bubble wrap and fragile tape are my urns from Wayfair. So it's time to do a little bit of unwrapping and hopefully they are as beautiful as the pictures. And here we go. So I've unwrapped the concrete urns and first impressions, they are exactly what I was hoping for. A little more gray in color, but obviously that is <laughs> the color of concrete. But I'm thinking I might try and do something to make them, well, in an ideal world, I thought they were gonna be a little bit more white or yellowy. But now my imagination is going a little bit wild and I know that so many people are gonna think this is the most horrific <laughs> idea they've ever heard. But imagine if they were gold, like how cool would that be? I don't think I wanna keep them in this gray shade. So I might do a little bit of research, but imagine how crazy it would be to have gold urns in your garden with beautiful flowers spilling over the top and down the sides. I think that could look totally bonkers and down in the rose garden where things are a little bit more crazy like with the pink hose pipe for example it could look pretty fun but yeah gonna see what charlie thinks see if my idea gets approved i might have a little look on pinterest this evening but yeah quality wise they look really lovely and i think they would be pretty easy to diy a little bit so stay tuned <laughs> I thought I would just have a little rummage in the shed and I've already actually seen what I was looking for. Um, okay, that is, yes, the brand Rust Oleum Metallic Pure Gold All Surface Paint. Yep, that sounds good. What's this? Um, spray adhesive? No, I don't want that. Any more sprays anywhere? Let's have a little rummage. No, that's paints. Um, nothing exciting in there. Nothing exciting in there. Any more sprays? No. Okay, so I can feel this is super light because, yeah, there's not going to be much in there. But before I go ordering a ton more off Amazon, I'm just going to go for it. I actually was just looking on YouTube and there was a lady that had equally grey concrete urns and she spray painted them with this brand but in a copper colour and then she got a white spray and a greeny spray and used a cloth. I'll leave the video link down below in case you want to have a little look but I'm just gonna have a little spray of this and see how it looks. Are you going to come and provide your assistance? My stretchy sausage? Come on then, come on then. Whatever I do, I always have my guard dogs. I always have my guard dogs.
Okay, that is completely finished, but I think we have got the general idea. This is quite a yellowy gold, but I think if I was to put some white over the top um, and then use a cloth to make it a little bit uneven, that could be <laughs> seriously epic. So I'm gonna order, you can see the difference here. Obviously not a particularly neat job, but I think with a couple of coats, this could look rather awesome. Quite a fun and relatively affordable way of getting gold urns in your garden. Um, so yes, that's gonna be in my Amazon order this evening. A couple more of these and we should have ourselves a fun garden urn DIY project. And by the way, sprays are the best thing ever because they are so quick. We have just finished our dinner, which I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm gonna put the footage of tonight's dinner in yesterday's vlog and pretend that it was yesterday because I've just been editing yesterday's vlog and it is so boring, <laughs> like literally nothing happened. It is so boring. Even the dinner is not gonna make it that exciting, but it needed a little bit of padding out. So if you watch to the end of this vlog, you'll know a little secret. Um, but anyway, Charlie and I are gonna do our evening walk around the garden. He's just moving the sprinkler. I swear he is obsessed with sprinklers. Don't know if there's really anything to report in the garden but I'm quite liking our new evening habit and the dogs enjoy it too. It means they get to spend a little bit of time. Where are you? Ah, Dickens is literally always at my feet but I don't know where he is. Anyway, let's go for a little mooch around the garden. Cheeky! Oh here they are! How nice of you to join us! Ah, I just love this table and chairs so much. Hydrangea is starting to come out even more. Is this the one that was the pom-pom tree last yeah, year, like your mum's got? Yeah, the one mum's got. Mum's thriving even more, but it's because we need to start feeding them. Yeah. We need to feed them every I, couple of weeks. It's amazing <laughs> that that used to be a pom-pom. That I didn't realise, but that's what this discolouring means. What does it mean? It means it needs feeding. Oh, with same, proper same hydrangea feed. Earlier. Yeah. Well, oh dear. Oh, this one's going to be good like thing a about deep pink. Yeah, but these are dying already. Look. Oh, and this one feeding. got bitten in the frost, didn't it? Um, the good thing about hydrangeas is they're the same feed as azaleas. They like acid soil, so right. it's ericaceous. So the same as azalea feed, same as rhododendron. What's in here? Coriander from seed. I agree with that. <laughs> it looks a bit miserable. Yeah, but I've been I've been using it. We have so much coriander down in the herb garden. And it's nice to have some close to the home. How are these herbs doing? Pretty good, I've walked them over. Chives have been attacked by those flies, but... Yeah, but you know, I did do that DIY hack that everyone recommended. They're mostly dead, these things. They're yeah, ants, they're I... flying ants. No, they they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. They're far... No, that's not there's flying ants. There's ants on ant. there. Look, that's an ant. Well, there's ants in addition, but the little black things... We well... need to get some basil out here, because that attracts them more. And it keeps away from the chives. Yeah, it's looking good though, and this We've hydrangea is just down here to fill though. Yeah, <coughs> and then I reckon some that's dill, max, some really. basil, and what else do we need? I don't know. Oh, it's so lovely. I think I've got some kind of eczema on my neck. Can't see it, but it's really dry. It's just dry skin, but stop scratching. Should we go and check out Hydrangea Island? Yeah, although that that's only here for this year. I think I think we will move those plants to another bed. I don't like that bed there. I really mm. don't. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> It's just temporary, I think. <laughs> it's going be nice though. But the grass is... Oh my goodness, the grass is properly... But I actually don't mind. Well, at least we know Do it all. you mind it? I don't mind. This is the hydrangea from the Elizabeth Arden girls. Oh, we're going to get wet again. Oh. That was such a girly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh. um. That looks lovely. So beautiful. Yeah, we need to sort this out because it looks... Oh, he doesn't want to come over because of the sprinkler. Little bunny. If you missed it in the previous vlog, this used to be a circle of soil, but Charlie decided to put grass seed on it before we decided that it was going to stay as a flower bed. So now it just looks like we've got random hydrangeas in the lawn. Because I never watered it. Because we changed our mind so quickly. <laughs> what grass seed is it? Because it's done very well. Yeah. Well, if I'm honest... It, oh, oh, for God's sake. If I'm honest, it's not a bad thing because I think these plants, this summer they'll stay here and then we'll move into another bed. Yes. <clears throat> Lovely white hydrangea. Let's go and check out the herb garden.
You are so lovely. We need to have another salad to eat some of our salad leaves. Herbs are looking good. We need to do a risotto with some of this lovely rosemary, curly leaf parsley, flat leaf parsley, coriander, chive, peppermint, and an artichoke. These are looking good. I think I need to. Yeah, I need to plant my rose bush as well. Ooh, time for battle. Not through the flower bed, you cheeky rascal. <laughs> God, I love these boys so much, it's ridiculous. Chicky, 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 lin Okay, I've got an idea for a really fun competition down in the comments box. Who can list in the comments the most nicknames you've ever heard me call Dexter and Dickens? So you might have to go back to some of the old videos for Dexter's super old nicknames because there's some that we haven't called him in quite a while. But I want to see who knows the most nicknames that Charlie and I have called our little boys. That will be very interesting <laughs> to see who remembers the most because we certainly call these boys so many silly names, don't we, my little treasure? And things like that don't count because that's just a descriptive word. I mean nicknames like Dicky, Chicky, Chicky Lin Lin, things like that. You're so funny. You are so special to me. You are so special to me. And your brother. Dex is the original. Here he comes. The most handsome doggy in the world. I adore you. I absolutely adore you. That hairy bottom. Look at that hairy bottom. To see the tag, so it's all right. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Daddy, I love you so much. And I look on jealously. <laughs> I can hear his jaws chopping together. Be careful with him. <laughs> Silly boys. This is the area that I was describing in the last vlog, the bit beyond the pom pom trees, as the bit that Charlie and I are potentially going to. What did we say? We're going to pebble over or grass yeah, so over? I think what we're going to do is it's going to be quite a job, but we can do it mostly ourselves. Rip out this and dig out all this soil. Yeah. All this rotten wood needs to go. Yeah. Now, the depressing job that we're going to have to do, mm. but it's to get it right, is we're going to have to dig all these stones up and put them all in big buckets. Real bad. And then we're going to have to weed kill. Yeah. And then we're going to maybe naturally, hopefully, weed kill. Mm. And then we're going to have to. Um, put down like a membrane, like Blum a black neck. membrane, right. to then put these on. These are already on a membrane, look, but the membrane has perished if you dig yeah, deep enough. Yeah. So then that will stop the weeds. Obviously, it's a thing that people have to do every sort of 10 years. Um, but that will then keep this area mostly these sort of, maybe we'll mix in some yellow Cotswold stone. Yeah. And then a bench or some sort of like nice chair around this walnut tree. Mm -hmm. And then we're not sure because it would be nice to have a social area down here. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know about a fire pit because of the tree above. Mm. So we might, if we do want a fire pit, I think the most obvious place would actually be in that corner there. You know, but I don't, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Look at Dickie. Tricky Dickie. Hiding. Dickie, what are we doing in there? We're the Silly little boy. Where's the eldest? Dexie. Dexie, come here. We should we shouldn't let Dicky come down here until he gets his haircut because he gets covered in the seeds. 
Daddy, I can't help being scroofy. Yep. Yep. We do need to de weed it though. I don't know how we'll do that. have to come down with our trowel. Would you believe that I fish netted all the gunk that was floating on top of this pond a couple of days ago? Well, about a week ago. And it's back to being covered in leaves. This is going to be a continual job, isn't it? But worth it. Alright, first we make the bed. We get so excited at night time because it means that we're getting a treat. First we make the bed so it's nice and comfortable. People have been asking me for my evening routine, but I think it's more interesting to show Dixie and Dickie's evening routine. And then Daddy gets this one. So Daddy... I like to fluff this one so that they can then nuzzle under that one if they get chilly. Yes. What do we think? Knows the score. I approve Dickens of this bed setup, Daddy. Isn't quite so sure. We could do getting them a new blanket each for their beds, actually, because those white ones are a bit grim. Yes. A Poor Dickens, because Dexter's snuffled all the food. We ring the treat bell so that if puppies are outside, they know that if the bell rings, it means they're getting a treat. I wait patiently. I wait patiently. Are you <laughs> I'm not spin. Yes, spin number spin one, one, spin number two, spin, spin number three. Another spin. We do three spins. That was three. He's done three bed. already. In your bed, please. In your bed. Dexter just plays your it cool. Boys. Dicky loses his shizzle. Boys. And what Mummy has to do? Let's put a piss pad out. I have to put a tinky pad down because we still like to do a little wheeze at night because sausage dogs like their mother, are incredibly stubborn and hard to train. So we have to put little pads down in case puppies need a wee-wee in the night. Please don't wee on my laundry. Oh, good night, my angels. Kiss for Dixie. Kiss for Dickie. I love you. I love you. Night, night, my big boys. You are the most precious things in the entire world to me. Good night. And as for my evening routine, I start by taking most of my makeup off with a micellar water. This is the Very Rose 3-in-1 Hydrating Micellar Water from Nooks and it is absolutely gorgeous. It removes makeup really well and it's got a really lovely rose fragrance to it and we all know that I'm obsessed with rose products. Then I will use my Liz Earl Cleanse and Polish. Oh, and of course, reusable cotton pad. I'll use my Liz Earl Cleanse and Polish as my second cleanse. Then I will pop on, perhaps, um, an Elizabeth Arden Ceramide Capsule. These are so silky soft. I have loved these for two or three years now. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Brush my teeth, obviously. Then, over on the bedside table, I will take three of my vitamins. These are from a company called Lumity. I've been taking these for a couple of weeks now um, and very much liking them. I can tell you more about those in a future video if you like. And then I will do whatever my skin feels like it needs, which most of the time is a little bit of pampering oil. This is the Clarins Blue Orchid Treatment Oil. Um, so I'll pop some of that on my face, some Lano Lips on my lips, some Sally Hansen cuticle oil on my nails. <laughs> I think my hands get more of a pamper than anything else. The La Mer Rejuvenating Hand Serum on the backs of my hands. And then Charlie has pinched my La Mer hand cream over there. And then Charlie will mist the pillows with our Aromatherapy Associates Pillow Mist. Wow. Wow.